My name is Ames, and the song is called Mama, It's Me. I wrote Mama, It's Me a couple of years ago for my mother. It's sort of a love letter to her. I moved out of the house when I was 18, and she was she worried about me a lot. My mother's a very religious woman, you know, and I, I came out to her when I was 16, and, and that worried her so much because she was so afraid that I would never find anyone to love me. I've since met my life partner, and we're engaged, and I'm very happy I've met my person. And I was able to take my fiancé home for Christmas to meet my family, and they loved her. So this is just sort of a, a reassurance, I guess. When the phone rings, you hope that it's me. And you hope that it's not You just hope that I'm safe Whatever they say You don't trust a word Because you know me And you feel when I'm hurt And you'll take my side Every time Mama, it's me I want you to know that the baby you raised the best way you could has finally grown. Mama, it's me. You worried enough. And the tiniest heart you ever did start has finally found love. Has finally found love. you have it isn't the best well I'm doing well and money is good yeah you'd be impressed and I might be torn but I still got your skin and there's not a mean bone in my body nor has there ever been and you'll take my side Every time, Mama, it's me I want you to know That the baby you raised The best way you could Has finally grown Mama, it's me You worried enough And the tiniest heart You ever did start Has finally found love Has finally found love Finally found love I'm eating enough, yeah And I'm staying warm, yeah The city is rough, but I lock my doors Mama, it's me I want you to know that the baby you raised the best way you could has finally grown. Well, Mama, it's me. You've worried enough. And the tiniest heart you ever did start has finally found love. Has finally found love. Has finally found love. Has finally found love. It's funny fun. I'm from the Midwest originally, so it has been a challenge um, sort of dealing with my family and, and coming out to them, but in Los Angeles the community is so strong that um, I feel very at home. I do a lot of co-writing for other artists and a, a lot of the artists are straight and I sort of tuck some of my own like little love experiences into there. My folks put me in piano lessons when I was four and I grew up um, playing piano in church and so 
I performed a lot. It got me in front of folks, and I learned how to improvise with hymns, and so that, that helped immensely. I don't think I could do this if it wasn't for that. There were a lot of hot girls at church, too. I think it took years of co-writing for me to finally find my own voice. I was doing uh, five sessions a week, and then you multiply that by the year, and then four year, five years, I've got a couple hundred songs. Kind of how this started was just um, my having a few songs that I was in love with that I knew weren't going to get released, and so I released them myself. A lot of them are so personal to me that I don't feel like anyone else would be able to use them. Before, when I would try to write my own songs, I just put so much pressure on myself. And now I'm able to kind of step out of my own way and let the songs write themselves. Growing up, we weren't allowed to listen to secular music. It was just hymns and classical music and like Amy Grant if, if we were being rebellious. So uh, my sister snuck me a Fiona Apple CD uh, title and that was the first time that I heard angsty music. And so that, that sort of inspired me. And then I was listening to Ani DeFranco and Melissa Etheridge. And Bonnie Raitt was a huge influence on me and continues to be. I kind of like to go back and listen to older stuff. It's all old school, I guess. I feel kind of like a little bit of a pioneer. And when I see people like King Princess, I'm like, yeah, you got it. Like, it's cool to see them just be. I think things started changing for me around when Katy Perry came out with I Kissed a Girl. That, I think, in my experience, sort of started moving things into, okay, 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 it's not so scary. I'm just so happy that we've been able to make this place a welcoming and warm environment for young people to be themselves and to question even, you know, gender fluidity and things like that. It's just, it's really encouraging and I'm so happy. <laughs>
But just hold on Hear the sound of the crowd shouting out Oh my God We'll just hold on I have been waiting to hold you for so long Yeah, hold on When it's over you'll know you were all that I want So hold on was a um a letter that I sort of wrote to my younger self. Um, I mentioned that you know, growing up, I uh, lived in a really conservative Christian environment, and I lived in a lot of fear, but I loved women. I adored women. I felt like my, uh, my adoration of women was too beautiful to be damned, and so I, I wasn't really afraid of hell after a while because I just felt like this the way I see women and the way I love them just there there's it's beautiful and I feel like God gave that to me so I wish that my 13 year old self could see where I'm at now and she would have had so much hope and things would have been so much easier so the song is just a letter to her <laughs> 